How's it going, you guys? So today we are going to implement the try data structure. Being able to implement this data structure is very important on leak code. This question has been asked at Amazon, Facebook, Google, and Microsoft. So before I get into the video, definitely like and subscribe. It really helps out the channel. And don't forget to check out my Patreon if you want to support me further. So this video is more focused on the implementation of a try rather than explaining exactly where a try is used. If you want a more in-depth explanation as to what a try data structure is, I have another video explaining it and the link will be in the description. But to summarize, a try is a tree data structure where the nodes store letters inside of the alphabet. And we can connect these nodes together to just store words inside of it. So I'm gonna walk through a full example as to what we have to do to implement this try data structure. We need to implement the following functions, insert, search, and starts with. Our insert function will just insert a word inside of our try. The search function will determine if a word is present inside of the try. And lastly, the starts with function will determine if a certain prefix is inside of it. If we look at the notes that are provided in the problem description, you can see that it says you may assume that all inputs consist of lowercase letters A to Z. Additionally, all inputs are guaranteed to be non-empty strings. So the first note is very important. We don't have to worry about any other letters other than just lowercase letters. So each node inside of our try will have the possibility to have up to 26 children, where each child is an individual lowercase letters, A, B, C, D, all the way up to Z. So let's say we wanna insert the words cats and cape inside of our try. Initially, we're just going to have a dummy node as our root. In order to insert the word cats, we would create a node for each individual character in that word. So we would have a new node for C, a new node for A, a new node for T, and a new node for S. And then all of these nodes would be connected together. So A would be a child of C, T would be a child of A, and S would be a child of T. As for inserting cape, we can see that our first character is a C and we've already created a node C. So that means we move to character A. Once again, we've already created that node. Then we move to characters P and E and we have to create nodes for both of those characters. Node P will be connected to node A and E will be connected to P. Now that we've inserted both words, we need to determine at which point we've actually created the words. So for example, if we were going down this tree data structure, if we go to character A, CA is not a word. However, when we go down to character S, that would be a word at that point because we went from CATS. So all we need to do is label which nodes our words. So that would be character S and character E. An easy way to think about this is the last character in whatever word that we're inserting will be the node that is marked as a word. Doing this step is very important because this is how we are going to implement our search function. So for example, let's say we wanted to search for the word cat. We would find C, find A, find T, but node T is not marked as a word. So we would actually return false. But then if we said, let's search for cats, we would go from C, A, T, S. And since S is marked as a word, that means we would return true. However, the logic for the function starts with is a little bit different. For example, let's say we wanted to check if any word inside of our try starts with cap. We would go from C to A to P, and since all of those nodes in that exact path were created, that means we would return true from our function. Okay, so let's implement the code. We have to implement this try class. The first thing we're gonna wanna do is create a node class in order to store all of the individual letters. So we can come down here and say class node, and inside of it, we're gonna have a couple different attributes. We're going to have obviously the character, we can just call it C. We're also going to have a Boolean, which says if the node is a word or not at that point. And then finally, we're going to need to store all 26 children potentially. So to do this, we can just use an array of size 26. So we can say node and we can call them children. And then inside of our constructor, we're gonna be passing in our character. So we can say this.c equals c is word is just gonna be initialized to false. And then finally, we're going to initialize our children array, 
and this will be of size 26. The reason why it has to be 26 is because remember, we're only dealing with lowercase letters. So each index from zero to 25 will be responsible for storing one character. So index zero will map to character A, index one will map to character B, index two to character C, and so on. So this children attribute is the main reason why it is considered a tree data structure because every single node is going to be pointing to up to 26 different other nodes. So now that we have this class implemented, we can start implementing the class try. So the first thing we want to do is we need to create some sort of dummy node. So we can say node root and then inside of our constructor, we can say root equals new node and we can initialize the node, our root to have really any character because we're not gonna be using this root node. So what I like to do is just do slash zero and this pretty much just means that it's an empty character. Now we can start implementing our insert function. The first thing we wanna do is we wanna keep track of a current node that we're moving through our tree data structure with. So we're going to create another node and we can call it cur and this will always start at the root, at the very top of our tree. And now we need to loop over all of our characters. So we could say int i, i is less than word dot length. And then inside of here, we need to extract the character. So we could say word char at i. So this is where it kind of gets interesting. We need to check if current already has a node created at character c. So this will make more sense once we write it out in code. So we can say if cur dot children of C minus character A, if that's equal to null, then we need to create the node. So we'll say cur dot children C minus A equals new node of character C. So the reason why we're doing C minus A is because character A has a certain decimal value. So whatever character that we're getting, we can always subtract it by character A and that will be an index between zero and 25. Technically, we could have implemented this using like a map data structure, but this is much easier to write. You just have to understand why you have to subtract it by character A. So if the node at that index is null, then we're just creating it. And this is kind of where the inserting magic happens. We're creating the new node with that character C at that index. Once we come out of this if statement, we know that that node has already been created. So we can say cur equals cur dot children at C minus character A. So this step is actually moving down the chain inside of our tree. And once we come out of this for loop, we're going to mark whatever our current node is. We're gonna say cur dot is word, and that is gonna be equal to true. The reason why we do this is because remember, the very last character in whatever word that we're inserting, we always need to mark that node as the word is true. So now we can move on to implementing search and starts with. As you can probably imagine, both of these functions are very, very similar. So we can actually just have another helper function that both of these functions call. So what we want to do in this helper function is we're going to return a node and we're gonna say get node and we're going to pass in the word that we are looking for. So this helper function will actually return the very last node in the word that we're looking for. So you're gonna see that this helper function is actually written very similarly to our insert. So just like before, we're going to have a node cur and we're gonna start it at root and then we're going to loop over the word that we passed in. So we say word.length i++ just like before, we're gonna extract the character, word char at i. And now we need to check if the node at character C is even created. If the node at character C is null, then we just return null from this helper function because there is no node that has that path of characters. So we can say if cur.children C minus character A, if it's equal to null, then just return null. We can't move forward. Once we come out of this if statement, just like before, we need to move our cur. So we'll say cur dot children c minus character a. And then when we come out of the for loop, all we need to do is return cur because cur is the very last character inside of that word. And now we can use this helper function to implement our search. 
So the first thing we want to do is say node is equal to get node at the word. So we're searching if that specific word is inside of our try. So pretty much all we need to do is check if node is word is equal to true. So we can go down here, we'll say return if node is not equal to null, because remember, get node has the potential to return null. So we have to do that check before. And node is word. And now for starts with, it's actually even simpler. We just need to make sure that the node that we're looking for is not equal to null. So we can say return get node at the prefix not equal to null. If the node that we return is not equal to null, that must mean that the prefix was inside of our try. All right, so that is it for a try data structure. Let's just make sure that this solution works. So our time complexity for insert, search, and starts with will all be O of M, where M is the number of characters that we have inside of the word. For each of these functions, we have to start from our root, and we're always going to go down at the maximum of what our character length is. As for our space complexity, our insert will be O of M, where M is the number of characters we have in our word. On line 15, we have to create a new node with the character, so that's where the extra space comes from. However, for our search and starts with, that is constant. We do not implement any extra memory in those functions. So that was the implementation of a tried data structure. Thank you so much for watching. If you found this video useful, definitely consider liking and subscribing. I release video tutorials like this every single week. Support me on Patreon if you want access to my private Discord channel. And with that, I will see you guys in the next one.